Hey guys, today I have some advanced masking tips for you in ZBrush, so let's get started. So in front of me here, I have this insectoid. I based him off of the Crufix from D&D Monster Manual. I'm super happy the way he turned out. Super gross and, well, he's just pretty gross. All right, so all the tips I'm gonna share with you right now help me create this guy. If you don't know what masking is, this video really isn't for you, but just really quick, all you do is hold control and there we go. This black spot appeared and that black spot is what is selected. All right. So if you click W on your keyboard, you'll go to transpose mode. And this is super cool and I just learned this. I don't know how, it's kind of a beginner tip. Uh, if you hold control and then move this anywhere, it will duplicate what you have. And what's really cool about this is that it keeps your original object masked. So if I want to, I can just work on this one piece right here individually with different brushes affecting the other. I can go through my subtool menu here and I can split it into a new object as well. So it's kind of like a duplication slash, slash masking tip, but you get the point. Another really awesome tip is in the brush menu. So if you go to the brush menu and scroll down to auto masking, you can mask by polygroups. So take this from zero to hundred and just what it sounds like, it will mask only the polygroup that you're hovered over. So his face here, I've emerged a while ago, but if I hold shift and then click F on my keyboard, you'll notice that's two different colors. The head is this kind of yellow and that purplish is the eye. That's because there are two separate objects and then I end up merging them together. Now, since I merge them together, I can't split them. Uh, merging is a permanent function, but I can still interact with them independently thanks to this masking trick. So hold control, and then just like that, only masks this area. So you can see my mouse cursor is going all over the place, but it's only has to mask the eye, which is really nice. Cause now say if I wanted to make the eye bigger or if I made a mistake, I can now pull them out a little bit more. That's terrifying. Um, I can still manipulate that separately. It's also really cool with that. If I want to, I could split it back into its own object. I could duplicate it, all kinds of things. Masking is super helpful. Now, one of the last tips, also I found out somewhat recently, it's super helpful, has to do with detailing thin elements. So all those little spiky legs that he has here has these little like uh, cracks and stripes on them. This is not a good time to save ZBrush. So usually what happens is, is if my brush size is larger than the thickness of the mesh, so see how my brush here is larger than his entire leg? If I start to sculpt on it, it doesn't, this is a clay buildup brush. So what it should be doing is taking the leg and making it larger if we have bump right here. What it's actually doing is it's making this concave effect. Even if I make the brush a bit smaller, it might still, there we go. That's what it should do. But as you can tell, it's still warping, even though I made the brush smaller. To prevent this, just go to brush, then go to back face mask. You can manipulate a lot about this. You can manipulate the curve here, how it's gonna interact. Um, I just keep it at 100 usually and keep it as a linear function. I don't mess with it too much. Now that that's enacted, where I start to build up form here, you can tell it's not deforming that weird like pothole way it was before. It actually just built up the form of the leg here, which is really nice. So this could be used for spider insect legs like this, or what I use it for really commonly is when I'm detailing swords and stuff. All right, so those are just three really quick advanced masking tips. Really hope they helped you guys. Have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.